the product, the process, the people, ethos decorum. My name is Brandon Williamson. I own a brand called PRSVR or Persevere Clothing. How did you get into fashion? I got into fashion, you know, kind of by happenstance. Um, you know, after finishing college and um, working with a couple of my um, high school friends, you know, we decided to start this company. Um, we kind of kept hitting a wall within what we were doing with sneaker customization. We were some of the first guys in the Midwest to kind of do the painting and reapplying and repurposing the sneakers and stuff on Air Force Ones. What happened though, in the winter back then, fall winter time, Nike would stop selling all whites. All whites, all white Air Force Ones were the base model for what we were doing. So every time those four to five months would hit, we didn't have any way to get money anymore. We would contact Nike, try to get them to send us some shoes. We would try to find them on eBay. We'd go through all these practices to find a product, you know, but we couldn't find it. One day a friend of ours was like, you know, y'all just need to start your own brand. We was like, shut up. We can't start no own brand. We three black guys from Michigan. We can't start a company. Like, we don't have any money. You know, we're not trained in that. Like, how are we going to do that and compete with the likes of LRG and Sean John and Rockaware? We were just like, all right, whatever. We put it to the back of our head. But, you know, one day, you know, my, my guy was just like, yo, we just need to go forth and try it and, and see what we can do. And here we are. So our brand is really broken down into three categories, outerwear, footwear, and travel wear. Why don't we get started with the outerwear, which is what most people are familiar with, especially our leather work. So when you come, we all are, I don't know how to put this, we want to just update some of your classic pieces. So those silhouettes that you're already used to and comfortable wearing, it's time to kind of graduate them and use more premium materials. So when you look at something like our Leatherman jacket, most of these times you would see it as like a classic letterman, but with this we've done the raglan sleeves, you've got the detail of the nubuck suede on the sleeves, and then you've got the full lambskin body. You're going to see the detailing again around the pocket here, the signature flamingo pink lining. Instead of doing heavy logos on the exterior of everything, we wanted to just keep it really subtle. And when you pop that lining, they'll know what it is, and that's what it's all about distinction and recognition. It's not necessarily about what brand you're wearing, it's about how you look in the brand. So when we kind of move from still in the leather and suede category, you can do it in different colors. So where we've got it now in the red on red, we've done them in navy blue. Again, you could do it in like a forest green. This becomes like the lab coat. So still that you know, same combination between the suede and the leather, but an elongated silhouette, a little bit more formal, but can still easily be dressed up or dressed down depending on what occasion or what outfit you want to put with. You know, some of the little details are going to be like the gold, the branded hardware. Just those little extra touches that let you know that these are investment pieces. It's not really going to be about how much you're going to spend or how much you could save. It's how much you really want to invest in yourself. Um, you know, this is your business card these days. You know, not too many people are still carrying around those little paper cards that end up in shoe boxes or on the floor of your car. It's about how you present yourself, you know, what you're gonna, gonna look like. And in today's world where pictures or perception is reality, you always wanna make sure that the, the picture that you're presenting is one of distinction. So another piece in the, in the outerwear department is when you move into other seasons, we wanted to bring out some different types of fabric. So with us, a, a key portion of our brand is our three pillars. So we want it to be comfortable, stylish, and functional. And so whenever we're picking a silhouette or a fabric, we want to make sure that it fits into those three categories. And this cotton twill is definitely functional. It's going to be lightweight enough where you can easily layer it, but it's still solid enough to protect you against some of the weather ailments. You know, we're making these clothes for people who live and work in the city. And so when we go out to work every day, we don't know. It might be sunny in the morning, raining at lunchtime, and it could be even snowing by the time we get off work. And so we want to be prepared for whatever the weather and the day might bring to us. So this is our concrete camo. You know, we never want you to be the loudest person in the room but we want you to stand out and stand out for the right reason. So this kind of gray on gray camo gives just a little bit of 
you know, that special touch of a camouflage without it being super loud. You know, we see some of the brightly colored camos and that has a place for it, but it's just not necessarily what Persevere is all about. We want it to, you know, be something you're not going to be ashamed of to pull out, you know, three years from now, five years from now. Again, you're going to still see the touches with the branded hardware, always the flamingo silk lining. You know, you've got your classic trench silhouette with the belt. And then we can do it in different. So this was like a one-off that again, is just gonna be something a little bit different. You know, stand out, dress it up, dress it down. Or you can go into, right, a more traditional, but it's still gonna have that extra touch of style. So that whether, you know, if you do find yourself in more of a corporate setting on a daily basis, there's still a place and a way for you to really exhibit and present your personal style, your personal flavor without standing out, you know, without feeling like you're wearing your son's clothing or that you're trying to dress like someone that you're not. You're, you command attention for the right reasons and you want to be somebody that they ask about, not necessarily someone that they're just talking about. So again, in that twill and leather family, this is going to be that similar silhouette to what we saw with the children's jacket and the bomber, you know, mixing materials, always having a little bit of a leather touch to it. This one we called our War Red. Um, and for us, everything has an acronym. So for us, Red, we do R-E-D, Resilience Erases Defeat. Right? As long as we're persevering, as long as we're continuing to forge forward, we can never be defeated. And so, you know, when, when we see people try on these clothes, and I wish we could, you know, get someone to show you and put it on, everybody kind of changes. And you see them, you know, kind of do a little spin move in the mirror and, you know, flex their collar. And that's what we want, right, is that when you put on certain garments, they make you feel the way that you think about yourself. And that's what we're always talking about, you know, project that image out about who you want to be. It might not be who you are right now, but who do you see yourself as? You know, at least we can start dressing the part. How would you best describe your brand? When it comes to the brand PRSVR, I think I best describe it as like elevated, like uh, elevated hooping gear. <laughs> you know, we kind of take things that we like or have liked over the years, and we just try to give a different spin to it. Um, you know, within, you know, when we first came out, we had leather track pants and we had leather hoodies. Um, then we kind of had just grown and escalated that and elevated that into the winter coats and things like that. So like, when it comes to like our brand's representation, like, you know, we kind of represent like, um, you know, hip hop when it grew up. Hip hop, it's still hip hop. We're not quite gonna go and go into the Gucci store and think that that's where we need to be. We're gonna create the things that we wanna see within the streets. 15 years ago when we first started a company, we were a footwear company. We wanted to make shoes, we wanted to create our silhouettes and do our thing. And then life kind of happened and we realized how much making the shoes costed and we didn't have any money. So, you know, to be able to come back around and to make shoes and make footwear whenever we want and use the, the highest grades of materials, like this Barney Bull, which features, you know, an, an amazing cow high leather, python belly up the tongue, a stingray heel cup, with the Margum Souls, like this is something that we only dreamed of being able to do. We were remaking shoes and taking Jordans apart and adding pythons to them back in the day. Now we're able to say, okay, I want to make a new shoe today, let's go make it. Um, you know, and in addition to us um, adding on our furrier, we also have our own footwear facility too that can make a lot of the things we want to see hands on and we can make them first and run them back and forth and check them out and do those different things. So now we don't have to really wait for the Italian company to say, okay, cool, we're giving you a space here in the, in the, in the activity log to get yours done. We kind of taken that into our own hands to be able to do it on our own and for other companies. <laughs> and then when we came through with the hoop and short, you know, this was something again, like, Growing up in the 80s, you know, growing up in the 90s, being able to wear the authentic Jordan Bulls jer shorts, jersey shorts, the piston shorts, we want to kind of create our own. Like we always talk about this team that we represent of fathers, entrepreneurs, families. It's like, well, this is the team short. This is where we, we suit up for the uniform, whether we're on vacation, whether we're lounging around the house, whether we're, you know, actually going to play ball. Like these are things we can wear you know, that'll give us our comfort, our elevated look, our elevated comfort, you know, but we can still get out if we have to. We can still go for a triple-double on the court. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's the Pharaoh edition of the, of the hoop and short. How would you best describe your design process? Um, you know, so for the design process for us, it really comes down to like, okay, 
we look for materials first. We look for materials that we feel are special or we like or new leathers that we may come across of or new colors or whatever the fabrication is that we come across. We kind of look at that first and be like, okay, what does this material say to you? Like when you see this material, what, what would you like to have it be made of? Like what would you want it to make? You know, so then we start looking at different trench coat styles or vintage styles or vintage fur styles or, you know, just kind of getting that, emo that, that emotion and that, um, that ambition to kind of create those things for us. So our design process, is, it starts with the materials, then we kind of visualize what we see first within that. Then we go to sketching and we go to pattern making and we go to through and get the samples done. One of the unique things about the brand is the ability for it to be unisex. When we first came out, we were like, okay, cool, we called, we called it like a unisex brand. And this was six years ago, and that wasn't a prominent title that brands were using because what guy wants to wear clothes that another girl could wear, or what girl is necessarily gonna say, okay, this guy clothes fits me. So it was still an early turn that we were using. It kind of came from um, when we made like our first product, we made the sample, and I sent my measurements to the pattern maker, but like my actual measurements and they didn't add any loosening. So when they came back, they were too tight. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know what to do with these because they were like skin tight pants now. They were the same size as my body. So I, Margaret tried them on so I could see how they looked and we just noticed like, hey, there might be something to this. If you can wear these pants and I can wear these pants, we need to start to create these looks that are synonymous with each other. Like, not like, oh, we're matchy matchy, but we play for the same team. So it's like, as that continued to grow, you know, we would make, the winter coat now for women. We would make a bomber for women, like just trying things out. We haven't really ever gone all in with that premise, but then when we started to have children, it's like, okay, again, we have a new team member. We need to make a new jersey. Like these jerseys have to be created. Like we have to make new warm up suits for this new teammate. Um, so it's, it, now it's something that we, you know, we are known for, that people look to. Um, you know, so it's definitely important, but the thought process behind it was like accidental, but then it was like, man, like we really might be onto something because again, like, you know, when it comes to the guy, the hustling guy that's coming in the store, like he's gonna buy his coat, but his lady's there too. Why has he gotta go to another place to get her coat? Like, let's just get both coats from here, you know? So for this current fall collection, we wanted to kind of find just another way that we could kind of dress up our camouflage. Um, you know, growing up on Bape and, you know, a lot of the streetwear stuff, we would wear camouflage shorts every day. We wear camouflage hoodies every day. So we wanted to find a way to kind of bring camouflage into a more elevated role. And that kind of brought us into our tweeted desert camouflage in the black version of it as well. So with this, we have a camouflage printed tweed material and we just paired it with the vest. So with that, you know, we did the cargo vest and we did the vest as well. The cargo pants, excuse me, and the vest as well. Just as ways that we could dress it up, dress it down, you know, be in elevated materials you know, while still kind of representing the culture, as we would say, you know what I mean? Like, we're still being able to, you know, exemplify like these materials and patterns that we want to represent, you know, but it's more tailored, you know, it still gives off this distinguished look, you know, and it's something that people haven't seen before. So it just still is something unique to us. Um, this is something new that's going to release for 2018. This is just a different camouflage print that we created, you know, still to drive home that force of like, okay, yes, it's camouflage, but you know, it's not necessarily an urban thing. Like it's still something that we're taking and blending with all black or all brown or different neutrals and tones for us to be able to really like drive home that camouflage can be worn in all place. Um, you know, and then when we kind of come over to like our leather, where like we're most famous for our leather pieces. You know, so with that, you know, no matter what we do as a brand, we're always gonna come back around to leather, leather and fur, um, you know, being elements of the brand that we constantly represent for. This is like our version one of the winter coat. When we first released this, this is kind of before, you know, a lot of other companies kind of got up on the fur additions to the coats. Um, you know, so with this being early into that, you know, we kind of were the driving force for that kind of continuing on, you know, with its mainstay, you know, and then it's only right for us to continue to elevate within that. We obtain a furrier um, overseas that is able to make all that things for us. So now we're branding the fur that we make. Um, you know, and it comes men, women, and children. So we kind of got everybody covered. And then when it just comes to design, it's like we kind of like how first downs, triple fat gooses, you know, the, the double goose coats that we were wearing when we grew up, we wanted to elevate them, give them that like luxe look, you know, put the first to it and really like go all in, you know what I mean? 
When it comes to detail and quality, like those are just two of the attributes that are super important to us. Um, detail more so the attention to it and making sure that, you know, if we have a lapel that we've scored it correctly within, if it's a, a, a shawl or a notch collar, you know, just kind of making sure that we're thinking of things that our client may not even know about so that when they do learn about it and they go back to check to see if their favorite PRSBO code has it, they've already got it and we've got it covered. Um, you know, so we're still kind of educating our clients and, and making sure that we've got them covered when they're going from, you know, maybe their school age time to being an adult and, you know, being in an executive environment or going from an executive environment and then having to go and be an entrepreneur. So we're still trying to, you know, make sure we have them with the proper pieces that they need or we need rather, you know, to get to that next level and be fully outfitted in uniform. When it comes to like my favorite piece that, that PRSVR has ever created, um, it's kind of a two-fold thing. Um, you know, on one hand, the streetcar coat is one of my favorites for sure. Um, I won't say we were the first company to ever put a fur collar on an item, but within our space and the people that we are, um, you know, kind of catering to, we were the first to do that. And we made a huge splash with that item. Um, and then from there, the 710 boot. The 710 boot was the first sneaker that I fully created and designed by myself. Um, you know, so with that, you know, it was a special piece and then, and then when P. Diddy wore it, like that kind of just cemented what we were doing, um, you know, for someone of that stature to wear our footwear. To wear our clothing, you know, that happens because we're still making a very quality item when it comes to the clothing, but for them to take a chance on our footwear, you know, we're very connected to what we put on our feet. Like some guys only wear Jordan or only wear Nike or only wear Adidas, like we're very loyal almost to a fault sometimes as to what footwear we wear. So for them to take a chance on this and, and wear it and love it and enjoy it and show it off and, and feel like the amazing person that he is, you know, that was a huge, huge accomplishment for us, for sure. So a lot of times we would get asked, like, you know, why is the lining pink? Or if guys would see the coats and they'd be like, oh, this is the girl's coat, let me see the men's one. And, you know, we chose the pink flamingo lining just as a symbol of just us as individuals. Um, probably I say 20 years ago I used to wear this huge flamingo like lawn ornament on like a 50 inch Cuban link chain and we kind of wore it to represent like our desire to like kind of stand out like we're all very quiet individuals we don't do much talking unless we need to talk so if someone gets on an elevator with us we may not be inclined to tell them our story but with this giant flamingo on with this wing flapping no matter who it is they're gonna say like all right that's cool what is that and then from that, we're able to go into our spiel of, hey, we, op we, we operate and own an elevated lifestyle brand called Persevere. The Flamingo is our mascot. The reason we chose it as our mascot was because it could stand on one foot and balance its whole body on that one foot. We kind of took that to mean, like, regardless as to what facet of our business we're in, we can still balance what we're doing within everything else and still hold up the rest of the body of the brand. Um, with Flamingos, we were all fairly tall guys. Like, we would kind of use that as like, you know, it's us and this slender figure. But at the same time, flamingos often don't make much noise. If they do make noise, that means there's trouble on the horizon. Which again, we kind of use that as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a meaning for it as well. So when we elevated and we stopped doing like, you know, t-shirts and things like that, people would always ask, well, where's the flamingo? The flamingo's not on the clothes. And it's like, well, it kind of didn't have anything to do with this part of the process. Like we didn't want to put logos on anything at the time. So to always keep the flamingo near and dear to us, we always kept it on the inside which hits the lining. We kept it on the lining. It's a pop, um, you know, anyone from Meek Mill to Fabulous to Puff Daddy makes sure that when they do wear our product, that that's shown. So it's definitely become something that even when we want to kind of shy away from it, we can because that's how our clients know that it's our product. So as you guys know, we are a brand that's for his, hers, and baby. So one of the funnest part is creating items for our little ones in our lives. It started because a lot of our clients were coming to us asking for custom garments for their kids' birthdays. And then once we became parents, we realized there is a huge market out there for little boys' clothing that's cute without being too cutesy. So we thought, why not just take some of our best-selling items and shrink them down to smaller sizes. So if we look here, you can kind of see one of our like best silhouette. So you see this that we've done for adults in the flight jacket, which is one of our best selling sets. So this is a, a special edition that we did in the merino wool with the lambskin lining, making sure that it has the cotton cuffs and collar so that it's actually functional for kids. You know, one thing that we want to do is even though we're putting them in 
more premium products, we still want them to be able to run around, jump, climb, kick, spill things on it, and it doesn't ruin it. So one of the other great things that we've done is like our Gambino tracksuit. So again, that classic sort of windbreaker silhouette, that fabric that we're all used to and know from the 90s and 80s is now back and in a more updated silhouette that we can be dressed up, dressed down. Um, we have a four-year-old and a one-year-old and we put both of them in it and it was the cutest birthday pictures ever. Uh, we also do those in matching sizes for adults, so keep an eye out. So I think we've got a couple celebrity families that are going to be rocking those for the holidays as well. And then when it comes time for special occasions, as far as Christmas, New Year's, Easter, birthdays, we have our luxury line, you know, that's just really, you know, for those times where you don't want to put on another, you know, bomber jacket or denim jacket, you can pull out this, it's called the streetcar. And it's again that English wool, lambskin lining, you're always going to see the signature flamingo silk lining piece. And on this one, the client wanted to add like a custom mink collar. And again, like everything, you can pull it out and do it for mom or dad as well. So you can get the corresponding pieces, taking great family photos. Again, it's just about, you know, really what we're calling the new cool. And it's cool to be a mom, be a dad, have a family, do things together, show that you're connected, not just through passion, but now you can also be connected through fashion as well. And so as we move over, you can sort of see some of our, our core items. We call it the classics. We're really sort of known for our leatherwear and our, for our outerwear. And when you come here, you kind of start down here with some of our like signature pieces. This is an updated biker jacket. Again, we want to always be dealing with classic silhouettes. So nothing that's gonna be that, oh, whoa, did you see what so-and-so had on? It's more of the, damn, did you see what so-and-so had on? So that's, that's the reaction that we're looking for. And again, where you've got one for her, you can pull it out and get one for him as well. What's also unique about our line is that, yes, this might be the one that you see on Instagram, the one that you see on the website, but you can always customize it to fit your preferences. So if instead of pink, you want it to be red here, you want it to be green, you want it to be royal blue, those are things that we can do and change for you at almost no additional cost because we own the materials, we own the manufacturing process. We can create those custom garments for you without you having to spend thousands of dollars. So when it came to the dojo jacket, like um, we're a brand that really just kind of bases our looks on the silhouettes. We don't ever really use much logoing or characters or caricatures or anything like that. So when we had the idea to create the satin dojo jacket, we wanted to take our elements, which are passion, resilience, sacrifice, values, and respect, and create animals that kind of represented them, represented each of those fundamentals. So here we have the passion flamingo, it's a little hard to see it with this tonal, but the respect tiger, and the gorilla having the values, and the octopus being the sacrifice, and the dragon being resilience. So we kind of created this Japanese or this oriental motif that we can kind of take and like put characteristics to what it is that we represent already as people. Like these are animals that like we kind of admire or look at things about them and like, oh, we can see ourselves in them. And then with the values, these are things we live by. These are things that we feel that all people need in order to persevere, hence the name of the brand.